sample I have here is Kentucky bluegrass, and the reason I have the sample is just to show uh, rhizome uh, development. So when we're dealing with stem development on turf grasses, uh, we have underground feet, uh, stems, what are known, known as rhizomes, and uh, what will happen is that down in the crown, right down in this area of the plant, I may initiate, or this plant may initiate what would be some rhizome development. And I don't know if you can see here, but um, right here where the pointer is at is a very short rhizome that's starting to emerge from the lower leaf sheath. Uh, if I look a little bit over here, uh, to, I guess to your left as you view it, you can see uh, more rhizome development. Uh, if I come over here to the left, I see another rhizome to the left, uh, to your right hand side looking at the, um, the, the Kentucky bluegrass sample. Now rhizomes are defined as stems. They, uh, and by stem, we can look at any part of the plant that would have two nodes and an inner node. And if I look over here, you can see a node and then another node, and wherever their nodes are, I can have roots originate from that. What this lateral uh, stem growth underground allows the plant to do over time is to fill in. So if I have any type of turf grass uh, thinning in grasses that have the ability to produce a rhizome, which we refer to as rhizomatous, would have the ability to fill in over a period of time. In fact, Kentucky bluegrass, which really uh, a positive or distinct characteristic of the Kentucky bluegrass is its ability to fill in maybe about a square foot area from one single plant because of the uh, production of these uh, rhizomes. Now other plants uh, may have what's called a stolen. Now this is a sample of Bermuda grass and Bermuda grass will have rhizomes but it also will have above ground stems that are uh, called stolons. And with the stolon, the stem, once again, uh, any part of the plant where I can define a node here and then over here where this leaf is originating would be another node. But I would have a node here, but kind of go along, it looks like another node here. This distance between the two nodes is defined as an inner node. So any grasses that when we define have stem, uh, type of stem growth would need to be defined as having a node and then some type of an inner node. Wherever there's an inner node, I can have the plant begin to produce uh, roots and then also it can produce a new uh, shoot growth uh, from a, a particular node. Uh, uh, grasses can also, so when we look at stems, grasses have uh, horizontal stems that can be below ground, known as rhizomes, and then above ground stems, which would be called uh, stolons. The other thing, when we talk about stems before, we talked about horizontal lateral stems such as uh, rhizomes and stolons, but grasses can also produce what we call a seed stem or seed calm and this would be an example of some orchard grass that's in flower and grasses if they're not mowed might get up to be about two or three feet in height and may produce some type of a seed hit or inflorescence. So by definition this area in here would also be considered to be stem tissue uh, for uh, turf grasses. So. Uh, when we deal with turf grasses, we're really talking about uh, several type of stems, which could be seed stems, seed calms. We could also have uh, rhizomes, and then we can have stolons. Another type of stem is called a crown. What I wanted to try to do is see if we can find the crown, which is uh, defined as a stem tissue. It's a very compressed stem. Um, and uh, with turf grasses, and what's unique about turf grasses is that uh, the uh, crown remains towards the base of the soil and things like mowing can, can occur and, and we can have regrowth coming uh, from, from the crown. So what I'm going to try to do is take a section of this plant and see if we can pull it apart. The other thing too, as we look at turf grasses, is that they are considered to be too ranked, meaning that as I pull back, the older leaves are on the outside of the plant and they're at about 180 a degree uh, orientation from one another as they come off of the uh, crown at basically a node. So I'm going to pull back this lower leaf sheath here and then I'll pull back this other leaf sheath. Now where the, um, the leaf sheath actually is attached to would be at the base of a at the crown and at a node and um, you know by definition 
when we talk about stems, it would be where we have a node, inner node, and, and so with, with the crown tissue, it's very compacted or compressed uh, down to the base. I'm going to take and pull this other leaf of the tall fescue sheath down to where it's attached. If you look, it continues to go down and it's basically attached down here. So where that's attached to would be a node. And once again, I've already pulled about three or four leaves off and all of them have been coming down here to the base of the plant or known as the crown, which is defined as a compressed stem. Now this one might be a little bit harder for me to pull back because the younger leaf is in the center coming up here. But I'll try to continue to pull back. And once again, the sheath with this plan is going to be connected down to the base, down at the crown. And it's going to be at a node. And as you can see, this is going to kind of break apart, but I pull it apart. And then I have the next younger leaf that's emerging up. But I'm going to try to pull back some of the, uh, the leaf sheath and leaves. And you can see as I continue to pull back, I'm getting down to the top of the crown area. Here's an older leaf sheath I'm going to pull back. But right here, this area right here is considered to be the crown. And so really this is where all turf grasses are basically originating leaf growth from. And then during vegetative production, new leaves will be uh, developing. If it moves into a reproductive stage, we'll see an inflorescence uh, develop and then begin to elongate uh, from the crown.